Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. I wanted to jump on here very quickly and just sort of share with you my thoughts on today's press conference that was held by the sixth and former president, Edgar Lungo. Now, I must tell you that listening to him speak today really left a very bad taste in my mouth, only because I could sense, I could hear, I could feel the pathos of his resentment, his anger, his sense of rejection, and also a desire to get back that which he fairly and rightly lost via the choice of the Zambian people. And what amazes me about former President Lungo, even though today he talked about how he, through consultation, through great prayer and meditation and supplication, he thought this thing through, that he came to a place where he concluded that the only way, according to him, that he can salvage and save democracy in Zambia, as he sees it, is for him to, to make a return to active politics, is for him to take another stab, no pun intended, a stab at the presidency. And, and, and his tone is worrisome because it was very militant. His tone was it had a an air of ultimatum about it at one point during his speech he said if you push us too far we will retaliate now when a former head of state speaks like that especially given six and former president lungo's past his style of governance the way that he allowed kadas to have free reign and how the Kadas literally almost became a militia under the tutelage of ECL, under the government of ECL, we were seeing and witnessing a rise in militias. Mark my words, there was coming a time, and we were, we were very slowly inching towards that era. There was coming a time where Kadas would have been so strong that they would have demanded a seat at the table. And had Edgar Lungo refused to give them a seat at the table of power, they would have taken it by force because they had the numbers. That is the environment that we lived in as a people. And so when I hear him now bemoan and complain about, of course, this is his interpretation, Everything that ECL described today does not exist. It's simply a governance issue. For, for ECL to imply that HH is a dictator is simply being disingenuous. And, and, and if, in fact, if anything, ECL knows good and well that that's not true. But he's playing to the gallery. He's trying to tap into this false narrative that HH is a dictator when ECL knows he's not a dictator. This whole thing, this whole push has to do with one thing and one thing alone. The desire, the, un, the, the unquenchable thirst and desire to regain political power by any means necessary. And today he made that abundantly clear. He said, we will do what we can. He said, if we're pushed against the wall, we're going to push back. Now, those words are militant words. What's going to happen over the next several months? Those that are going to rally around ECL, those that are going to raise his name as the banner of, 
a return to that style of politics are going to defend ECL even to the death. There are fanatical PF members that miss their way of life so much so that they will be willing to kill, maim, hurt to regain the status that they once possessed under ECL. And, and the only person, as far as they're concerned, in their minds, that can take them back to their way of life, that can take them back to the way they used to live, that can take them back to a place where they walked around like they were the be-all and end-all, that can take them back to a place where they flouted and broke the law with impunity, that can take them back to a place of utter lawlessness. In their minds, it's ECL. So they will rally behind him because they know that in their minds, possibly, he is the vehicle that will take him to a place that they once possessed. But my brothers and sisters, let me tell you, Zambia has moved on. We really have. And, and, and this is what I find sad about the ECL saga, that there are people around him that cannot whisper reality in his ears. There are people around him that cannot pull back the curtain and say, ECL, you've served twice. You were sworn in twice. You, you served in the capacity of president twice. You ran your race. You did your part. It's time for you to step aside and sit on the sidelines and cheer somebody else on. No, no. Instead, ECL decides to put his name forward. The, quintal, the, the quintessential sense of selfishness self-centeredness self-aggrandizement and self-service and do not be deceived by that thin veneer of humility there is nothing hum there is nothing humble about ecl there is nothing humble about him it's all about me. It's all about self-service. It's all about It's all about, well, they took the presidency from me. I shouldn't have given it to them. It's all about that. It's not about country first. The part of his speech that made me very worried was when he said, what type of Zambia are we going to have? Zambia is fine without you. You know why? Because you've served. What makes you think that Zambia will only find its footing if and when you return. That, that you, you're being delusional. You're not being realistic. And I blame you, sir. And I blame the people around you. I blame your whole conclave. I blame your entire group and your entire squad, your entire posse and your entire organization because you have lost sight of what patriotism is service to country love of country all you are concerned with all you are focused on is trying to get back that which you lost zambia is bigger than you sir and after it's all said and done when the dust settles and when the dew dries and we bury you after you depart zambia will still be here and it doesn't matter what president comes, even after HH, because he's not going to be there forever. He's got a tenure, just like you had a tenure. HH has a tenure. That day when the Zambian people decide to set HH aside and say, HH, you've done your bit. You've done your part. You've ran your race. You did well. It's time for you to step aside and let somebody else take over. When that time comes... We will do the very same thing. But for you, sir, to sit there and say the universe revolves around you is being disingenuous. I feel sorry for you, sir, I do. Because this whole thing is going to end terribly for you. All right. Thought I'd share that with you. Good night. All right, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.